Shalom Bracha, good evening. I have a very strong will to assist and to help with practical advice now. In our days, we all going through very big challenges. The enormous amount of pain and difficulties, emotional pain, physical um, challenges and obstacles a person can experience a day is enormous. As if we live few lifetimes in one, like you spend the whole month in each day. And for people, the need to ventilate and to relax and to come back to their sanity, to their senses, is great. But not everyone knows exactly how to do so and how to come back to our senses and to balance ourselves and settle our minds. There is a very powerful, a very holy, energetic, spiritual tool that can be used by every individual, an individual, and it's to tie and bond ourselves to the Holy Chariot of Hashem. It's kind of ancient meditation that is based on ancient knowledge, based on Kabbalah, handwrites and it's a great powerful tool because in reality first of all it does not take a long time to make it happen to use it and to enjoy very fast you'll sense and feel the development and the shift the spiritual and emotional shift after keeping that advice and making this short meditation. So it doesn't take a long time for that thing to happen. It's like a couple of minutes, maybe even less. And the other thing is that it's literally so powerful and useful that with time, you'll understand that, uh, that you should learn more about how to do it and how to to enjoy this great light, for you to be able to make longer meditations like that. And by that and through that, to pull more light to your life, into your place and to the life of your loved ones. So I'm going to do it in the shortest way of them all. First of all, we need to create with our minds the structure of the Holy Chariot. So the first thing we do is that we imagine with our minds one triangle that is aiming to the top. That's the first one we build in our minds. So you can start building it from the right, the left um, bottom corner and then to rise up to the top corner and then to go down to the right and then to straight one line from the right to the left or you can do it in different directions it does not matter much and if to your mind your mind is clear enough that you immediately can see that triangle and you don't need to paint it so even better just have that triangle in mind and then you aim and shape and design the second triangle that it's based now is on the top and its angle and corner is going down. You're creating that one on top of the other and therefore you can use the first understanding and power of imagination you had in the beginning while creating the first one it will make it easier for you to create the second one. So then again, like we said before, you can create the second one from the top, going to the bottom, and then going back up to the left or in a different order. 
Or again, like I said before, if your mind is sharper and you're able to imagine the Star of David, the Magen David, immediately, so just like place it in front of you, the Star of David, two triangles, one is facing up and one is facing down. After you did that in front of you, you imagine, only in your mind, the verse Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, and then you put the words one with each corner. So I'm starting on the left upper corner and saying Shema, and then Yisrael in the top one, Adonai to the right, Eloheinu in the right bottom, Adonai in the bottom, Echad to the left bottom side. And then you completed the whole Star of David. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. When you finish putting that Star of David in front of you, you go to the back and you're establishing the exact same one behind you. Not that one, just one that is similar to that one, exactly the same to your back. If you need to go through that process of er painting, illustrating it in your mind, start somewhere, make the first triangle and then the second triangle or that you can just put with your mind the Star of David triangles behind you and again with the verse Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad six words that are in the number of the corners of the Magen David. After you put those um, shields in front of you and behind you, you attach the corners. You create a crossing line that is from the back to your front or from your front to the back, does not matter. Those are beams that are connecting. Those are lines of light that are connecting the left corner, left angle to the left one behind you, the upper one, the right top one, the right bottom one, the bottom one, the middle one, and the left bottom one. Again, using the words Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. To the ones that are not familiar with those words, those are the words that Jewish people and the nation of Israel are saying in Kriyat Shema, a prayer that we say three times a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, and once before we go to sleep. It's called Kriyat Shema She'al Hamita. Three times a day we say Shema Yisrael, so it's very easy to Google the, that verse that saying Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. So the Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto are the lines who are attaching the first star of David to the second one, the one that is in front of you, to the one behind. Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. When you did that, that's it, you finished. The truth is that now, there is a spiritual structure that is surrounding you, that is protecting you and creating a center of balance that shine of your soul is no longer spreading freely as if there are leakings and holes in your boat. Just everything is much more um, protected and guard and and uh, and safe for you when i finish making this amazing spiritual structure and i can do it few times a day i usually try to breathe a little bit and really to focus on that breathing that it will take me somewhere that it will bring me to a place of clarification of memory, of stability. So I'm taking a few long, deep breath and just coming back to my senses. And after doing so once, twice a day, three times a day, even five times a day, in each time that you feel a little bit of pressure, start with this amazing drill and you will see how useful it is. You will see that it will open your mind and it will relax and heal your spirit. 
it's really going to create a safe zone for you to be able to restart and to come back to your ability to function. It's a tension reducer and it's spiritual um, awakening tool. It's very balancing and you will see great results very fast. After we came back to ourselves now a little bit with this simple guiding, I want to tell you that I learned something very interesting today and I wanted to share a little bit about it. We know, I spoke about it in the last few days, a little bit about the flags of Israel. The nation of Israel, when we were walking in the desert, we were divided to camps. Each tribe was a camp on his own and gathered together in a certain shape. We were completing the camp of Israel and each tribe, each small camp, like a unit, was carrying a flag with the name of its tribe and a specific color that represents that tribe. And there is a very deep um, significant, significant meaning um, to the flags that they were shining and reflecting an individual light of each tribe to the rest of the tribes and by doing so showing hey guys we're here the pink ones the blue ones the yellow ones the green ones everyone were showing themselves waving and hinting the rest guys were here we spread and shared confidence to the rest of the tribes to know I'm backing you up. I'm on your side. I'm by your side. I'm I'm with you. You can count on me and I see your colors shining. I can count on you. And since the time of destruction when the temple was destroyed and the nation of Israel were exiled to the darkest place of them all among the nations since that time, learning the Torah and thinking about the Torah and praying to Hashem to keep the Torah is the replacement that we have for all Avodat Bet HaMikdash. Instead of serving the Maker in the Temple of Hashem that is now ruined, we are following the mitzvot and we're learning the Torah and through the Torah we are uplifting and rising the sparks that in the past we were rising through the flags and the mishkan and the sacrifices and the practical mitzvah that we were keeping in the biblical time in history. So today when you learn about the flags, it's as if you are carrying the flag now walking in the camp that belongs to your tribe. So what is the spiritual meaning of those flags for us today? Like what, what are we supposed to do with this information? Like how, how should we carry that flag? First of all, always when I'm learning Torah, I'm trying to make from a complex and large subject. I'm trying to break it down to small pieces. I'm trying to, bring it into my life and then I can hopefully in a more simple way understand what the maker wants for me what can I do for the maker what can I do for you Hashem so if back then we were supposed to wave that flag of ours that was reflecting our unique and specific shine and as well in the same time enjoying the positive energy of our friends waving in a similar way their specific color and spreading the confidence that they're also with us and we can feel secure that our friends are backing us up. I think that today, in a very simple way, a person can relate to that and understand that my flag that I'm waving 
is my personality, is who I really am. Because now you're not so sure exactly if you're from the tribe of Issachar or Zvulun or Shimon or Levi, Gad, Binyamin, Naftali. You're not so sure if you're from the tribe of Yehuda. Or maybe you're from the lost children of Moshe. You don't really know. Therefore, because that we know that the flags were really representing the personality of the tribe, because the name of the tribe was written on the flag, and the mark, the symbol of that specific tribe was printed, painted on it as well. And the specific color that was representing and shining the light of the spirit of that tribe. So we know that the real qualities were printed on the flag. So if we want to wave that flag today without having the physical flag, what that we should shine is our honest and true personality. And that's the only thing we have. And therefore, by being honest and truthful and not hiding your feelings, your thoughts, your dreams, your hopes, your holy desires, you're going to shine that light and spread it out for other people to receive confidence that you're also there and the courage to shine their light as well and the light will come back to you in a reflection to assist you and to help you to feel the confidence of not being alone and seeing your friends and loved ones growing and shining with you. Because if, let's say, I want to give you an advice now about Avodat Hashem, how to pray, how to do something in Avodat Hashem, if I will tell you, based on my life experience, the time you should wake up at 6 a.m. and the prayer you should pray in that minyan, in that synagogue, like that's amazing prayer. If you live, if you live across the ocean, you can definitely not pray with me in the same minyan. If uh, it's hard for you to wake up at 6 a.m. because you go to sleep later than me, or that you need more hours, or that your baby starts crying exactly at 6 um, and you're busy, so you cannot take that advice from me, even if that advice works for me in perfection. For me, it's the best advice, but how can it assist you if you're not able to wake up at 6 and you cannot do what I do? So how my advice will be useful for you? Therefore, that advice to wake up at 6 and to go to this specific synagogue will not be a working advice for you. So it's not an advice that a teacher should spread. A person cannot share light that is unedible, unaccessible, hard to, to use to, his, um, to, to the people around him. Therefore, a person should try to understand what really is the advice that Hashem wants me to give. If, let's say, I read from a specific book, this book, Likut HaLachot, an amazing book, changed my life. Guys, you should read it. <laughs> the Hebrew edition might be a bit hard for you guys. It might be a bit complex for you to handle this text. So what am I actually telling you? I'm giving you an advice that can just weaken your mind, can just like plant, God forbid, despair in your mind. Oh, Rav Dor, the wisdom depends in the book, Likuta Lachot, and now I cannot read that book because it's in Hebrew. Oh, I'm doomed. So that's not a practical advice. So I will never tell you, read Likuta Lachot. I will tell you, I read something very interesting in Likuta Lachot. I will tell you, I woke up this morning in, in an early hour, it helped me. I, I'll give a general advice and not a specific one. And except for talking about the advice, I will try to shine a certain light that is reflecting my honest and most inner effort on f of finding Hashem, of connecting myself to Hashem, and teaching you that you should find Hashem on your own as well as I am doing in my own personal journey. I cannot tell you how to do it. I can tell you to believe in yourselves and to do it. I cannot tell you what the advice that works for me is because it might not work for you. So I should just tell you that there is an advice that will work for you. And if you will call Hashem like I called him, 
He will answer you like he answered me. And that is the way that I will shine my light to you without denying your light, without stepping on your toes, waking up some thoughts and memories of things that are like hard for you, uh, that you are unable to keep and to follow. So really, if you want to shine the light and to step into that purpose of your creation, of being a light to the nations, light to your surroundings, you need to share your honest truth about your personal individual experience as a servant of the Maker. And while doing that, you will plant hope in hearts of your surroundings for them to believe that they also can cross the ocean and that they also can overpower their life challenges and that they can find answers to their questions as well like you did, even if our questions are different and the answers to our questions are different. I will not shine the questions and not answer the answers. I will shine the fact that I had answers. I had questions that were answered and you should ask as well and you shall be answered. When you do so, you light that unique and individual specific light that the maker of the universe treasured within you. He, the maker of the universe, gave you a godly soul, a portion of godliness from above. And you should believe in that. And you should know that if you'll be truthful and uncover your goodness, means be brave to be honest and truthful and share your most truthful thoughts just spread the light of your positive good soul, your godly soul among your loved ones and your surroundings in the circles that are close to you, that you meet on a daily basis. It might be on social media, but still it will be the ones who are close to you. If you will do so, you will perfect your actions to the highest levels of them all and the world will enjoy your light and will get stronger in shining their own light as well. Finding it first, believing in it then, and then spreading it out to the world. When you'll do so, the light will spread so widely that you will enjoy the illumination that everyone around you enjoyed from you. So I'm really, with all my heart, I'm asking you, strengthen yourselves. Be strong and powerful and go on into your inner journey of finding your true selves and then be brave to share that amazing life experience of spiritual growth and connecting yourselves to the Maker. Finding the purpose of your life will bring answers to all your questions and salvation to your surroundings. May Hashem answer accept and answer all our prayers and requests and may the redemption will take place in our days and in the days of all our beloved ones. Amen. May it be his will. Thank you.